Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is an audit analytics workshop covering payroll. And this workshop will be covering the risk areas of invalid employees, terminated employees paid after last paycheck, employees that are not paid according to their hourly rate or annual salary. So let's get started. So I've just imported the payroll data into IDEA. So the first thing we want need to do is determine invalid employees. And the way we do that is doing what we call the SIN digit check, check digit tech. So uh, essentially the concept is that every odd number, so the five, three, the one, the nine, the three, um, essentially just times by one, and then every even number needs to be multiplied by two, and where the number is actually two digits, so for example, eight times two, and is 16, you have to actually add the two digits together, so the one and the six. So let's get started. So what I actually like to do is I like to do sin odd, I actually like to separate out. So we're gonna use, first thing we're gonna do is turn sin into a string. And the reason why is because we wanna use mid. Uh, you actually have to go nine comma zero. And then we wanna look at the first digit and then we wanna just change that back to a number. So in this case, we're only looking at the first digit, which is the five. And then we're gonna add the third, the fifth, the seventh. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong number here. And the ninth digit. So it gives a score of 21. And then we're gonna do sin even. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated because we have to take consideration. It's not just multiplying by two. Uh, we also take consideration whether or not when we multiply by two, does it lead to two, a two-digit number? So two one val times two. So when you take nine times two which is the largest combination that's going to be 18. the number the, the, whenever it's a two digit number the first number is always going to be a one and we want to do one plus eight which equals nine so that's the same thing as doing 18 minus 10 which is taking away the one plus a one so that's what we're going to do so if this is greater than nine that means it's two digits we're going to take essentially take this number minus nine, or we can do minus nine plus one. Otherwise, just take the regular number. So we're gonna have to do that for this one. So essentially the fourth digit. And then the last one. The eighth digit. Evaluate. And then what we need to do next is basically sin value, which is basically sin odd plus sin even. And then now we need to see if this value divides evenly by 10. So the way I like to do it, sin check, I like to do a character. We'll make it, so we'll make it seven and we're gonna go, we're gonna go if sin value divided by 10 is equal to the integer of sin value divided by 10. So essentially, for example, 5.2, no, 5, 52 divided by 10 is 5.2, and the integer 5.2 is 5. So they're not equal. 
So in this case, if they are equal, it's like 50 divided by 5 is 5, integer 5 is 5. And put valid, otherwise we're going to put invalid. So we'll see all the valid ones and all the invalid ones. So that's good. It's fine and dandy. Um, what we're going to do next, so we've covered off that first one. Next thing you want to do is determine if employees are paid after the last paycheck. So what we're going to do here is we are going to identify the, all the terminated employees. So we're going to go, we'll do create a new table. Call it terminated employees. And that's essentially where the month is equal to zero for termination date. And since if there's actually a date there, uh, it won't be zero. So you'll see that there are 20 terminated employees. And we can do a quick check here and see that there are 20 records here. As well that's good now what we want to do is join the payroll data with the terminated employees so we only get the terminated payroll for the terminated employees we'll do it based off of employee number and in this case I only want the termination date that's good in fact I don't want these extra columns that are there I have 207 records here, and now I need to join this payroll data. I don't have the pay date, so take my pay period. I only want the end of the period, and I want payroll terminated with pay date. And again, we're going to do matches only. We're going to do it by pay period. We want that field, and we should have the same number of records. 207. And now what we want to do is identify where the age of between the termination date and the pay period date is greater than 14. That means since they can get paid up to, if they're terminated the day of their last pay, pay date, then they get paid 14 days later, which is going to be the highest. If they're paid, if they're paid the day before, it's going to be one day. So for example, if they're terminated on January 10th, the last pay date is going to be January 11th. So let's create a field called um, termination age, and we're going to virtual numeric. And we're going to use this function called age, which you can find here, and it's between two dates. So we're going to go termination date plus the period date. So let's sort this one. So you'll see that this person was terminated in 2011 but they're still being paid in 2013. So we know that all these large negatives are there where it starts not being an issue. So for example, this person was terminated in December, or yeah, December uh, 6, uh, 2013, but they're, oh, sorry, this is actually backwards. So February, no, November 1st, uh, you'll see that this is not an issue. But here, and this is, or sorry, this is an issue because they were, uh, actually terminated in 2012, but they were paid in 2013, more than two weeks. But you'll see this one's not an issue because they were terminated December 10th, um, and their end of the period is December 13th, which is, would be their last period date. So we're going to create a new table, and we're going to call invalid pay, and we're going to go where termination age is less than negative 14. So we see 109 records, and we're going to do one more. And we're going to go employee, summarized by gross pay. We're going to go invalid pay sum. And we'll see that it's only a couple employees. So we've tackled number two. Well, let's do number three. Employees paid outside their wage. So I'm going to create this field called adjusted rates. 
because right now I have the yearly salary. But what I really want to know is what's their period salary. So I'm going to go, if it equals salary, take the yearly salary divided by 26. Otherwise, just keep their hourly salary, hourly rate. So what you'll see here, it's always 30 if it's hourly, then it's divided by 50, no, 26. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to join it. I'm not going to carry these fields. Join it with the regular table. And all I really want is whether or not they're hourly and salary, and then their adjusted rates. And I'm going to join based off employee number. And I'm going to do matches only. So let's go payroll with adjusted rates. So that's good. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate uh, OT versus regular hours. So let's create a field. Let's call it regular hours. It's basically going to be if bi-weekly hours is greater than 80 or less than 80, then make it bi-weekly hours. Otherwise, make it 80. And then I'm going to put OT hours, very similar formula. If bi-weekly hours is greater than 80, and then I want bi-weekly hours to minus 80. Otherwise, make it zero. And then I'm going to have one more field, which is the adjusted hours, which is essentially going to be regular hours plus OT hours. Hours times one and a half, because they are in one and a half times, right? This is good. You can see here, this is an example of where they have very large OT hours. And then now on here, put gross pay recalc, which is essentially going to be adjusted hours times, which it depends. So if hourly wage, yearly I actually forgot to bring over one field. I brought over the wrong field. I brought over the rate. Uh, not a problem. So we're just going to join it. And all I want is this hourly salary. That's all I need. Just this one field. Nope. Determine the match. Okay, not a problem. Now we have it. So now I'm going to create a field called gross pay recalc, uh, which is going to be if hourly salary equals salary. Then make it uh, adjusted rates because it doesn't matter how many hours they work. Otherwise, make it adjusted rates times adjusted hours. And then, actually, we're going to modify this. Get two decimal places. And we are going to create a new field called variance, which is going to be. Gross pay minus gross pay recalc, which is going to be the variance. And then we're going to create a new table. We're going to call it um, payroll gross pay variance. And this is where variance does not equal zero important to do does not equal or rather than greater than because you care about negatives and positives 
And then we're going to do one more summarization. Similarly to the other table, we're going to go gross pay, gross pay recalc, variance, and we're going to call this gross payroll. So you can see all these issues here. So good, and then you can export the data. Um, so that's it for this workshop. I know it's a little bit of more complex workshop, but as you can see, there's nothing really too complicated that we perform in this analysis. It's really just the logic behind it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.